This is going to be the best session you attended today by far. Uh, and just a recap, we're running a raffle. So if you sit through the whole session, just two minutes at the end of the session, we'll pull out a name and you're going to win in our AirPod. There you go. You're going to be the winner. There we go. <laughs> um, so hi, everyone. Uh, as uh, Mickey kind of highlighted, I'm Somia Kapoor. I am the chief product owner and the co-founder of a company called AI Sera. And can anybody guess what that means? AI service era. So I'm going to ask you a lot of questions when I'm running this presentation. And what we're here to bring is an AI-driven service management solution to the market, right? Now, I'm going to set the stage and kind of highlighting why there is a need for an AI-driven customer service solution. Then I'm going to get to the grits of what does that solution really mean without selling iSera to you guys, and then get to the cruts of how we used various technologies using AWS and build this tech, you know, on AWS platform, right? Cool? So I think this is given, right? And each one of you are running businesses within your environment, which is kind of saying, this is a study done by uh, you know, Forrester and Gartner, which is saying that about 86% of the buyers will pay more for better customer experiences. Can't dispute that at all, right? And by 2020, it's not the price of your product, not the features of your product, but the experience that you're offering to your users will drive the brand loyalty of why they stick with you and why they're going to be there. That's the key element of why getting an AI-driven service, customer service management solution is becoming an epicenter of everything that we're doing, right? Right? So what is this new age customer experience, right? What is everybody talking about it? Because customer experience has been there for the last 10 years. Everybody's been working on it. But one thing has changed. It's the users coming and expecting that from your brand. And what do they expect is something that's fast, something that's simple, and something that's engaging and always available. Guess what? No matter th how many humans you hire in your customer service department, you will never be able to be, have all lights on 24 by 7, right? That's the mantra, what your users are expecting off of you, right? With that being said, I mean, can't go without this example, right? I mean, Uber drove me today. They are expecting an Uber-like experience. Has anybody ever spoken to a customer service human agent at Uber? You have? One? There isn't anybody. Most of them. One out of tons of you. And I'm sure all of you have used Uber or Lyft. Most of it is automated in the back end. I have lost my phone a couple of times. How many of you have lost your phone in Uber? Is it just me? There we go, a couple of you guys, there we go. Thank you, thank you, right? And as you've lost it, most of the time you've just interacted with a system. Now, it could be a ticketing system or an AI system that helped you guide through the process, right? So with that, conversational interfaces, conversational 2.0 interfaces are becoming the epicenter of every customer service solution. What do I mean by that? Conversational intelligence 2.0 is not a chatbot. Yes. Most of the people, most of the customer service departments have tried chatbots, but conversational intelligence platform solutions are not chatbots chatbots and they're not a request answering solution. So anytime when you go to your management and say, oh, I want to convert this into a conversational interface platform, they'll be like, yeah, I don't want to have another chatbot. I've heard experiences from everybody else. It is not that great. And there is a reason why it's not that great, right? Because there were versions of chatbots. Slack is a chatbot. Microsoft Teams is a chatbot. But the new conversational intelligence interfaces are not chatbots and they're not request answering services. So then what are they? Chatbot, not a chatbot, right? They are systems that are more proactive and prescriptive in nature, right? Like your Tesla. Does anybody have driven a Tesla or owns a Tesla? There we go. The experience is within it. It's still a car. But with every element of it, it's tracking and seeing how you're performing. And it steps in and provides a proactive, recommended system with its engagement all throughout the journey, right? That's what we are expecting. Not something that was a car became an electric car, right? 
So with that being said, what are the three elements that you should be looking at when you're looking at conversational interfaces to run your service management departments? The first very epicenter is yes, you know, they have to be AI driven, they need to have natural language processing, but what does that mean? What it means is that they, they, it's advanced software that learns with every interaction or historical data within your environment, right? So they need, they need to have a starting point. So you don't go ahead and build 20 developers in your environment to build a system like this, right? You need a system that comes in, can learn from your historical ticket data, or solution, can connect to your Salesforce, can connect to your Zendesk, can connect to your Jira service desk, and learn have and build a ground to truth on day one itself. So you don't need to start from scratch to build a skill within your environment. It understands what that skill is already within your environment, right? Second, it needs to evolve from every interaction and needs to, through the channel where your users are coming in. So it's not a system that learns from your historical data, but it's also a system that learns from every interaction within your environment. It could be from your users typing in a query or your agents even responding back because that is a self-learning and a self-healing environment in your this thing. And third, but not the least, it needs to capture the experience or profile of where your users are, which means that it needs to be interconnected with multiple systems, not only your ticketing system. It needs to understand that Somia is coming from California and she has an issue with her Comcast connection. Not that you call Comcast and like, okay, which zone you're in, which IP address. It needs to have the context of who I am as a user, my profile, and drive that conversation further. Does that make sense? Right? Now with that being said, this is the three fundamental pillars of a customer service, AI-driven customer service system. What it is, it's a concierge. What does that mean? That it is built on ground one automatically. It doesn't take you six months to build this system, doesn't take you nine months. On day one, with your historical data, it can start building automated interactions. Plus, it comes with high-level workflows. It does understand when you're using the intent in the context of what is the status of my order? What is, you know, where do I uh, stay? Where am I as a user? What other historical tickets have I opened up? What do I need? It is, is able to derive the intent from every interaction the user is having with the system. It needs to be a courier. There needs to be some skill-based learning in there. It needs to be coming with a vertical or a horizontal knowledge. If it is in the customer service side of consumer products, it needs to understand the language and the data associated in that environment, right? And it needs to be able to manage well load, right? Because conversations, the moment you'll enable conversational interfaces, you're gonna hit with massive load in terms of people asking questions. Even in the context of sometimes, they'll ask you questions like, what is the weather today? Why, why should my bot answer a weather question because it's not related? It needs to understand if the intent and entity of that solution is within the phrase or not. And last but not the least, it needs to provide suggestions. So if it's not able to provide a response to a query that's coming in, it automatically needs to learn from a human agent doing the interaction. Because the next time another user comes and asks for the same query, it's going to be able to respond back. That's the self-learning, which will help it build utterances, right? That's the whole NLP process over there. So there are types of conversations. We kind of bucket them in various systems, right? What are the different types of conversations? Typically, your chatbots reside in the common Q&A answer, right? People are asking question answers. That's where your Zendesk bots reside. That's where your Slack bot kind of requires resides. You set up one or two actions and you kind of enable. Then there are more common workflows and repeatable tasks that you can move across systems. And then there are definitely rare question answers which you don't have in the context of the data that you have. And last but not the re the more complicated workflow scenarios in your CRM. So where do you think the bulk of the questions pretty much reside? Any takers? Sorry, which side? On the left side, common Q&A? Is that where everybody's going for? Yeah? Yeah? Actually not. 
They reside more on the task related. They're not more question and answers. Actually, today's research done with the system, when you're asking for your bank checking status, you want to conduct an action on it. I want to transfer my, I don't know, account money from account A to account B. Or can you help me by, with my credit card? I'm lost. So they're not Q&A related. They're actually multi-threaded dialogue conversations within your environment. And that's where bulk of your automation for an AI-driven customer service management solution can be brought in. So you can reduce or better serve your agents for more tasks. This is what ICERA can provide you in your environment. If you're using ICERA, we bring automation not only for your frequently asked questions, but also for your simple to mid-level workflow engines right off the back. It doesn't take you three to six months to implement it, but less than five to 10, uh, less than five to 10 hours to get ICERA up and running within your environment, right? So with that being, let's drill a little bit deeper, right? With these tasks, you call them tasks, you call them skills, for any conversational interface, needs to be split into these four to five buckets, right? They're more knowledge serving. So if I'm asking an intent, is it more in the context of am I asking you a knowledge response? Like, how can I go ahead and share my calendar? So that is more knowledge serving. Is it action oriented? I want to I want to add a plug to my Outlook. Can you help me with that? That's more action oriented. Or is it more alert? Do you want to give me a notification? I put in a ticket. What's the status of my ticket? Where does it stand? Is it more alert? Or is it more dialogue driven? Oh, by the way, I want to you know I want the status of my tickets, but the ones that I opened in the last five days. And can you just show me all my tickets by? all status rather than open, closed, or in progress, right? More dialogue driven, multi-threaded dialogue. So you can say every task or every question that comes to your customer service department can be split into these four buckets, right? To evolve it. An example of here, I don't know why that's getting cut. This is where the examples come in. How do I reset my password? How many times do you get this question on your customer service or IT side? All the time, yes. In how many different ways does it come in? Can I change my password? I lost my password. I don't know what to do with my password. I can't log in the system. Every sort of this interaction needs to be understood in a natural language in processing with our system. And that's where the dialogue piece comes in. If you do not understand what's going on, the system needs to be smart enough to drive this conversation further as well to get to a dis deterministic resolution, right? The second is the deflection. Someone, lost, someone has lost my credit card, what do I do? Hand off to the live agent. This is more sort of deflection kind of scenarios. So what I'm showing you, an action or a task in an environment is sort of like a skill that you build in an AI-driven solution that helps you kind of navigate through the processing and natural language. So whenever you're looking for an AI-driven customer service solution, these are the elements you should see if it's able to handle all these wearables in order to make that happen. And if you go with ICERA, you'll definitely have all of them in your environment, right? With that being said, um, I want to walk you through the journey of how the evolution of conversation pretty much kind of took into place, right? Most of the time, um, evolution started with more sort of click-through navigations. These are the phone booths that we call, we call the banking systems. Press one, press two, very structured, very thick to the core, right? Uh, pizza ordering, very structured menus. If you got out of any of those menus, uh, you, you pretty much were getting off rails. Then it got into more keyword search, right? I searched a few things and it was able to derive some kind of context, quotes, and drive. Still no natural language processing, no intent, entity, or utterance derivation. Then it got to more structured phase matching. The difference from here to here was NLP came into element, but you had to derive, you had to write this. If you hear this intent, with these utterances, this is what you need to take into. So it was a lot more supervised learning mechanism that came in. And last but not the least, where the world is moving into is unsupervised learning. That means you don't have to build any decision trees in the environment. You don't have to tell me what an intent is. And I'm able to figure everything out 
Thank you, Paul, for the timer. Out of the box, right? It's more behavior driven. It has more context aware learning across. It understands who I am as a user, as an entity, right? With that being said, this is how we kind of build our service on, on AWS, right? You can see we kind of used a lot more of Lambda functions in order to build these conversational interfaces on a queue because it helped us understand multi-threaded dialogues on, on these various connectors. We also built a connector framework to all these other systems. So if you are on a service now, AWS, you have your catalogs residing on this, you don't need to start fresh with ICERA. You can go ahead and bring your ticketing solution and we coexist with your current environment to set you and enable you in a conversational interface. We're also providing omni-channel support with ICERA. We connect to your emails, to your chat solutions, to Alexa Connect, to all those environments, and then it can pick multitudes of data sources to kind of sit and reside on where it's sitting, right? More based on Elasticsearch. A detailed walkthrough of all the elements that we used with AWS was anything that can connect. So we use S3 in order to connect to your different data sources in your environment. So you could be having your systems in ServiceNow, in Zendesk, in Salesforce. We interconnect with the systems to get the user profile and the data source. We built using Lambda functions to have multitude of queues, and then that gets into multi-stores. The beauty here is not only to use conversations to interact with your end users, but also to connect it operationally to your operations data as well, right? To bring an alert that's coming from any of your systems and map that to a ticket coming or let's say a conversation coming from your users to figure out what is the issue within the environment to help your agents proactively respond back, right? I'm getting a timer here, last but not the least. What we also did, this is actually a data model of a ticket that is residing in your Zendesk or in your Salesforce or within your ServiceNow environment. We take that and we split it across multitudes of data sources in sort of creating one data lake so that at no given point of time we're getting locked down with one data source in terms of reads and writes, right? We're using Amazon Aurora for your incident rel relationships. Redis we're using to cache any previous user behavior history. We're using Redshift or uh, Athena for more analytics to provide at any given point of time what is going on with the correlation of an alert and a conversation request with the historical incident to create this three-dimensional structure to provide a response back. We're using a lot more of Elasticsearch to do the exploration aspect of your incidents, your historical data at any given point of time to say that, oh, this user had already created 10 tickets and there is a user pattern across all these users and what's happening. And last but not the least, we're also using a graph database where we're linking the knowledge with the incidents and alerts. That is the true differentiator of building an AI-driven customer service solution, which combines conversations with everything that's happening operationally in the back end. Three minutes left, and we have to run a, a raffle. Thank you all for joining. If you have more questions about, uh, about the presentation, ICERA, please feel free to reach me, or we'll be able to you know, provide more context.